the last time AMD flat out outperformed Intel in every single area was actually so long ago that some of you probably weren't even born yet. But since Ryzen CPUs came out back in 2017, AMD kept innovating and kept making huge steps forward while Intel's clearly been stuck in time trying to yet again optimize their 14 nanometer plus plus extra plus super plus or you know whatever plus CPUs for years now. Now, even though previous Ryzen processors kicked Intel's butt in multi-core performance, and pretty much most applications you can use to measure any kind of raw performance, when it comes to just pure gaming, Intel was still doing slightly better. So AMD just went ahead and decided to cut the last little thread that Intel was holding on to and take away that gaming crown as well. So today, AMD is releasing their brand new Zen 3 or Ryzen 5000 series processors that promise big single core improvements and with that, much better gaming performance as well. And not only will they be the best value option on the market, but also the fastest one as well. Or, you know, at least that is what they promised with their announcement a few weeks ago. So they are releasing a new lineup of 16 and 12 core Ryzen 9s, an 8 core Ryzen 7 and a 6 core Ryzen 5 processor. And in today's video, I'll be focusing on this Ryzen 5 and comparing it to Intel's i5 10600K right here to see who makes the best $300 or 300 euro gaming CPU. Let's start. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. So I'm not going to go too deep today into the changes that AMD made with this generation, but I do think it's very important to just quickly look at what AMD actually promised, because after all, that is what we need to judge them on today. They said that they managed to improve their chips uh, in such a way that they offer about 20% more single core performance at similar clock speeds, which is actually a huge improvement for one generation and it would actually give AMD a lead in any single threaded application. And two, that those improvements now made them faster than Intel in most games and if that is true, it would mean that AMD really made a flat out better CPU in every possible way. But to compare these two CPUs fairly, we actually need to make equally powerful systems for testing. So let's take a quick look here at my test benches to make sure that everything is nice and fair and square. So for the AMD CPU rig here, I went with the Asus ROG Crosshair 8 Hero motherboard, 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz Corsair Dominator Platinum memory, a 280 millimeter NZXT cooler, and an 850 watt Seasonic Prime Titanium power supply. The BIOS is set to XMP enabled and I'm using Windows 10 version 2004. There's no overclocks, no tweaks, just pure out of the box performance, what I would expect most people to run at their home. What actually is really great is that the B550 and X570 motherboards will already have the BIOS that will allow you to use these new processors. Now you still want to update them to improve the performance, but it should at least work right out of the box. Now you should check the website of the motherboard manufacturer if you're going to buy something or you already have something, but in theory it should work. So for the Intel rig here, I have the Asus ROG Maximus 13 Hero, 32 gigs of 3600 megahertz Corsair Dominator Platinum memory, and a 280 millimeter all-in-one cooler from Corsair, and also the same Seasonic Prime Titanium 850 watt power supply. Now BIOS is set to XMP, and I'm using the exact same version of Windows, of course. I decided to test with an RTX 3080 instead of a more mid-range option that you would expect to see paired with a $300 CPU because this will better show the differences between these two processors. If you use a lower tier GPU, you should expect all the differences you see today in this video to kind of shrink a bit. I should also point out that technically you do get a cooler with a Ryzen 5, whereas you don't get a cooler with an Intel Core i5, which kind of does add a bit more value to the Ryzen CPU. However, we all know from experience that a better cooler will improve your performance and you should always consider spending $30 to $50 more to get an at least mid-tier air cooler for either of the CPUs anyways. So let's look at some numbers and let's begin with the 1080p gaming where you would kind of expect to see the biggest difference between the two. 
And in the first games that I tested, like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, like Division 2 and Metro Exodus, I kind of started to get a little bit worried that AMD was kind of over-promising a bit, as Intel still showed small lead here. But that kind of changed uh, around quite quickly and Far Cry 5, a game that typically really favored Intel, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in Troy, Borderlands and several other games, AMD comfortably took the lead, sometimes even with 10% higher frame rates. In Wolfenstein Youngblood, uh, we can see that AMD got ahead by 20%, even if you kind of don't really actually need uh, 240 FPS in that game. So, on average, AMD ended up with a comfortable 6% lead in 1080p gaming, with the worst result being 2-3% behind and the best case scenario being around 20% ahead. So if you consider the fact that AMD was always a few percent behind Intel when it comes to 1080p gaming, this is a really big deal. Now you might want to argue that just average FPS is not the most important thing, but the 1% low data doesn't really tell a different story here. So let's check a couple of uh, esports titles where having high frame rates consistently is the most important thing you're looking for while gaming. Now AMD has been making some really big claims about Counter-Strike and I kind of expected them to comfortably beat Intel and they actually did. So average performance shows a small improvement over the i5 here, but you know, you probably won't care about the difference since the fastest monitor that you can currently get is a 360 Hz one anyways. Now looking at 1% and 10% lows, AMD does show they're actually putting out higher frame rates more consistently. If we look at Overwatch, the story is actually very similar with AMD showing a much better average FPS considerably better 10% lows and a better 1% low as well. It is important to remember that this game is actually capped at 400 FPS and if it wasn't, AMD would probably look even better. So in theory, even in esports games, AMD does look to be the one to go for. However, to my very great disappointment, uh, in Warzone, at reduced competitive settings, the Ryzen 5 system performed much, much worse than the i5 system. It was just really struggling to maintain smooth frame rates with frequent and noticeable drops under 100 FPS, and I would say even very big occasional hiccups, which would really hurt, you know, that serious competitive play. I made 100% sure that there was nothing else causing this. I tried different memory, I did a clean install, uh, I used different drivers, I swapped the GPU, I even swapped the motherboard, everything, but it kept stuttering no matter what I did. Now, on the positive side here, this didn't happen with the new Ryzen 9 5900X, only with this Ryzen 5. So this is probably something that can be fixed with a simple update, but it does bring up one very important point. Even in 2020, in some specific titles and settings, it's still possible to run into a situation where AMD just doesn't work well. So you should still make sure that the game you're planning to play works well with the CPU here. Now we can make fun of Intel and their serious lack of innovation in this desktop space, but it's usually very rare to encounter an issue like this with Intel, especially when it comes to uh, one of the most popular games at the moment. Now again, I'm pretty sure that this will improve over time and AMD will definitely uh, be taking its gaming crown in most titles. But again, if you're really into one specific game, do make sure you look for a review that covers that particular game for you. Anyway, Let's move on to higher resolution gaming. On 1440p, Intel and AMD do go head to head, uh, each winning a couple of games. Intel takes a significant 5% lead in Metro and even 10% in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, while AMD counters that nicely with a 4% lead in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 6% in Far Cry 5 and almost 9% in Wolfenstein. So on average, AMD ends up around half a percent ahead, which, you know, might not be that relevant, but the fact that AMD comes out just ahead of Intel instead of being behind is still very great. Now, the 4K gaming results are very interesting, I would say, as you probably would expect to be completely GPU bound with no real differences between the two. But it does seem like some games simply do favor one CPU over the other. Metro this time showing an even larger advantage for Intel and Wolfenstein showing a similar win for AMD. Now on average, it balances out almost perfectly with like less than a quarter of a percent difference between them. But still, these big per game differences do mean that if you're a diehard fan of one particular game, 
it will be worth checking to see if that's a game that favors Intel or AMD at the end of the day. Now, if we look at the overall average results across all resolutions here, AMD does come out looking very strong uh, with their 1080p lead being especially impressive here. So between the Ryzen 5 and this Intel Core i5, we can now call AMD the king of gaming, uh, assuming you're not playing Warzone, or at least until they fix their problem. Now, I also want to touch on the you know overall performance of these CPUs and not just look at gaming, but I kind of don't think that these results will really surprise anyone uh, if you followed any of the AMD reviews over the last couple of years, actually. And honestly, I would say it's not even a fair fight anymore with AMD just completely destroying Intel in single core and multi-core benchmarks like Cinebench here. And even in real rendering workload like Blender, Intel took about 24% longer to render the same scene with the system drawing more power. So AMD is clearly still the more efficient CPU as well. So technically I could run a dozen more CPU benchmarks, but you know, it would just <laughs> embarrass the i5 even more. And the result wouldn't change the fact that if you want to run some creative apps on the side, AMD makes the most sense. But before you run off to get one for yourself, I do want to make a few final points. Now, the biggest one is the performance issue I encountered with Warzone, which is very significant and game-breaking and may occur in some other games as well. So if they make an update and fix this issue, I will add a comment down below. But for now, if you're a big fan of one particular title, do make sure that that game specifically works well with this Ryzen CPU. Also, the $300 price point is a bit complicated in my opinion. This i5 is an easy prey, but there's also the Ryzen 7 from previous generation. Now, the new Ryzen 5 will beat the old Ryzen 7 in almost every game today, but sooner or later, 6 cores may become a limitation. Also, while this new Ryzen may beat the old Ryzen 5s, those chips are now going for around $200, which is fantastic for anyone that's trying to build a very good PC on a budget. Now, I guess AMD wants to upsell this 5600X and I cannot blame them for running their business, but we all expect that the Ryzen 5600 non-X at a lower price point should become the real value king and I really hope they launch that sooner rather than later. And finally, there's the fact that you do need a B550 or an X570 motherboard if you want to use this CPU right now. And if you want to use your B450 or an X470 motherboard, you will have to wait till next year for a BIOS update to be able to use it. And I do think that people that currently run a second generation of Ryzen CPUs will really benefit from this new generation, but they didn't need to buy a completely new motherboard right now, or they need to wait a few months more for no particular reason. So I'm personally not really a huge fan of the fact that this is taking so long. I'm really not sure what is behind this. Uh, are they trying to prevent shortages uh, so not too many people buy the CPU at launch? Or is this just a business decision to make sure that their board partners will sell, sell their motherboards first? I honestly don't know, it's complete speculation, but I somehow do think that they could have added this support for all the motherboards right now if they really wanted to, instead of, you know, making us wait for a couple of months more. But all that aside, nothing takes away from the truly impressive performance that they managed to show us today. And, you know, let's not even begin to compare that to the amount of work Intel still has to do if they want to get anywhere near the top anytime soon. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like content like this, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and you click that bell to never miss an upload. Till next time, bye.